NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory presents The Von Karman Lecture, a series of talks by scientists and engineers who are exploring our planet, our solar system, and all that lies beyond. Concepts for directly and deliberately manipulating Earth's climate system, collect collectively referred to as geoengineering, have been proposed and co as contingency responses to global warming. And this is one of the first official references to geoengineering. They said a change in the radiation balance of the Earth in the opposite direction from the warming caused from greenhouse gases could be produced by raising the reflectivity or the albedo of the Earth. Right? So this is the first kind of official reference to geoengineering. And over the decades that followed, uh, uh, um, some very outstanding scientists, both in the Soviet Union and the US, proposed in the scientific literature that we consider this as a fallback or emergency response, including Nobel laureate Paul Crutzen as recently as 2006. Okay, so now we're engineers. How do we save the planet? Okay, plan A that the human species is working on right now is to do two things, to mitigate and adapt. Mitigate means stop putting so much greenhouse gases into the air. The other one is to adapt. Notice that the arrow goes in the opposite direction. <laughs> we don't control temperature, we respond to it. So the other thing that we're doing is we're preparing for the future. People are moving away from the coast, we're building seawalls, we're preparing for storm surge, we're trying to build more resilient energy systems, we're trying to deal with resiliency in agricultural systems. A lot of funding is being spent around the world on adapting, preparing for the worst. Okay, so that's plan A. Now what happens if that's not enough? Here's where geoengineering comes in. Plan B has two parts. The first part is, is to literally pull carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. The other scheme is to increase the albedo, right? So I can turn up the albedo, make the Earth shinier. And this is called solar radiation management. So remember those two terms. Okay. So there have been a number of schemes proposed for geoengineering, and I'm not going to go through all of them. I'm going to pick a few examples, but they're generally bent into two groups. One is solar radiation management, which is basically cutting back on the amount of incoming solar radiation, whether I'm using sunshades in space or doing things in the atmosphere. Sunshades in space or doing things in the atmosphere, doing things in the atmosphere. Or changing the Earth's surface. And the other option is pulling CO2 out of the atmosphere, CO2 removal, using a, a lot of different techniques. I'm going to talk about a few. So, method one for reducing the amount of sunlight hitting the Earth is called stratospheric aerosol injection. Stratospheric aerosol injection. What does that mean? Well, scientists pay attention to what happens in the natural environment. And something they've known for a long time is when you have very large volcanoes, we see a drop in temperature around the world. Why does that happen? Well, very big volcanoes like Mount Pinatubo that erupted in the Philippines several times, but in 1991, it lofted so much stuff into the stratosphere in the form of aerosols, sulfur dioxide that you actually get a haze. You, this, this dark layer here is an after photo. Here's a before photo looking in the atmosphere. Here's an after. So we're taking a lesson from Mother Nature. So the idea is, well, if Mother Nature can do that, why don't we? So there have been a variety of schemes proposed, ranging from zany to pretty low tech. And they all have to do with getting aerosols into the stratosphere and keeping them there for years and years and years. So for example, if we used existing technology if we used aircraft, this would be the equivalent of taking a small airline and just saying, you do nothing but spray aerosols in the stratosphere for the next n decades. So think about how much that costs. Buy your own airline and do nothing but spray this stuff into the stratosphere. Think about how much that costs. Buy your own airline and do nothing but spray this stuff into the stratosphere. I'll come back to why these things are, are problematic. I'm just giving you an introduction. So thinking critically, you know, Seriously, uh, what are the problems with these? So this is built on some work by uh, Alan Robach, one of my colleagues, and also Mike McCracken. And I've tried to condense it to look at both the solar radiation management and carbon dioxide removal. And if we just look at the climate system, environmental systems, there are a lot of issues. One is it's known from looking at volcanic eruptions and this cooling effect that you get uneven heating, and you actually cause drought in some areas. So country A decides to do geoengineering, and they cause a drought in country B. You know, the missiles start flying. Um, 
What happens if we stop it abruptly? If, if we can't get control of CO2 and we start you know, injecting stuff in the stratosphere, it's costing us $10, $10 billion a year and we have an economic meltdown or a natural disaster or a volcano erupts and we can't fly airplanes for a while. What happens if that shield is removed quickly? We rapidly jump up in temperature. And the concern, even greater than that, is the fact of what we call instability in the system. If you whack a bell, it rings for a while. The concern of the climate system ringing like a bell and being unstable is a big concern. Climate models show this sort of stuff happens if you shut it off quickly. And there are a lot of other issues. We don't know what happens to ozone in some of these cases. We don't know what happens to cirrus clouds. If you make more cirrus clouds, you make things warmer. If you make more cirrus clouds, you make things warmer. There are a lot of ripple effects. We don't and there understand. are other issues. What about weaponization? If you grew up watching the $6 million man and the bionic woman like me, and remember there's an episode where a bad guy builds a weather machine and he's you know, holding all the government's hostage. Well, this is not science fiction anymore. It really could work. Not to mention the distraction of spending cost and, who arg and, and again, arguments over the thermostat. Whose hands on the thermostat, right? Look how hard it is to get international agreements on anything. So these are fraught issues. There have been studies, uh, what I kind of call one-off studies. There was one that was done by the United Kingdom, uh, the Royal Society a few years ago, where they tried to assess the relative affordability of some of these options versus the effectiveness. So ones up here in the, the right-hand quadrant would be, um, would be considered optimal. But that raises a concern, right? If it's perceived to be cheap and effective, then in the words of Dr. Strangelove, it merely requires the will <laughs> of, of trying this, right? And, and the perception of this could lead to unilateral action. And don't take my word for it. Listen to the World Economic Forum. Every year they put out a risk assessment. Just a couple of weeks ago they put out a risk assessment and they listed five wild cards or X, X factors for the 21st century. Rogue geoengineering was one of those. This is the economist and the business leaders worrying about somebody taking rogue action and just messing it up for everybody. So what's being done right now? Well, there are some national geoengineering programs. The United Kingdom has one. China has one. The Gates Foundation is funding some research. The Gates Foundation is funding some research. A small team in the U.S. Uh, and there are people actually planning field experiments next year. There are modeling efforts, which are pretty benign. Um, they're fairly small scale. And very recently, the National Science Foundation in the U.S. funded a group, a, a team of research scientists led by Penn State, to look at climate responses across the board, not just geoengineering, but they included geoengineering in the mix. As far as I know, the first such uh, US funded research activity. So that's fairly what new. What would my monitoring system have to do and how much lead time would it need to give me? In this scenario, you might consider deploying solar radiation management right before this, right? To prevent the worst and to keep your umbrella up until this could take effect. But this implies research and risk assessment we haven't done yet, right? Because this is not safe to do yet. We're not ready to do this. So geoengineering is definitely risky. It's problematic for the reasons we talked about. But rightly or wrongly, it's increasingly likely that someone, somewhere, somehow will try it. We're already starting to see the field experiments. So, so geoengineering is definitely risky. It's problematic for the reasons we talked about. But rightly or wrongly, it's increasingly likely that someone, somewhere, somehow will try it. We're already starting to see the field experiments.